Hi, welcome back to the channel. And before we get started, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. You know, the one right down there. And hit that like while you're at it. And hit the bell so you get future videos. So today's video, I'm going to uh, make a portable 20 meter Moxon antenna. Now some of you may remember my uh, my 6 meter Moxon antenna. I'll put that link up here someplace. Up there. And uh, you can review that one if you want to also. But this one's going to be for going out and may maybe doing parks on the air type stuff or just whenever I want to take it someplace. Stay tuned and we'll get this thing going. Thanks for joining me. KK6USY Ham Radio Adventures. What you want to do is you want to go in here and put in Moxon calculator, hit enter. This tippet one comes up, click on that. Frequency, I did 14, 250. Wire diameter was 26, and measured in AWG. And you hit the calculate button. And it brings up all your measurements for all your, um, for everything on your, your Moxon antenna here, for that, for that frequency. Let's go to the next page. So I put in, uh, up above, I put in uh, Moxon Antenna by DK7ZB, and this one came up. And he, he goes on to, to talk about how um, uh, Les Moxon was the inventor, uh, G6XN, out of uh, Great Britain. He uh, it's a two mel it's a two element Yagi basically with folded sides. It's about seventy-five percent the size of a normal full size beam. Two meter or a two element. Okay. It has a fifty ohm match, impedance match, right here. Okay, so it's just like a dipole, basically. Alright, and through the reduced size, you lose about 5.5 to 0.7 dB of gain compared to a full-size beam. But what you do get in this kind of a thing is you end up with front to back um, of greater or equal to 30 dB. Which that is higher than than a uh, regular Yagi two two element Yagi beam. So you you give away a little dB for a little better back to front front to back. Okay, here's the plate after I cut it. It's uh, six by nine and a half. I ended up putting a hole in the middle here for the mass to come through. Uh, once the mass comes through about five or six inches, then I can put a piece of PVC on top, and I use that to hold the uh, ends of the the little s spreaders out because they want to bend down with the weight. So I hold them up with some eighth inch paracord. Originally I had these four holes, and what they were for was to for the for the uh, mat, the little spreaders to come in and push against, but it doesn't really need it once they're in this these clamps. They clamp them down pretty good. Now to do this over again, I, this is eighth inch. I would probably do three sixteenths or quarter inch, and I'll probably redo this plate to make it a little bit stronger. The metal they use, the, the aluminum that they use for um, sign material is springy. It's not. It doesn't bend real easy, so I thought that might work, and it does but uh, a little bit a little more sturdy without it. So on the bottom I use those two holes to bolt a piece of angle iron here and I notched and I cut it real nice and then I, I've got a, a piece of aluminum that I cut here for the mass to bolt to and this will take up like a fence rail basically is what it's made for because I have a lot of fence rail stuff for uh, using for mast. So now these, these are for, let me see if I can get a little bit closer. These are for electric fence wire. And basically what you do is you put a nail through there and then nail it into a tree or a post. And then the wire clips into here and it holds it up off the ground. Got these at Tractor Supply. They're, per, they're pretty cheap. I forget what I paid for. I bought them a long time ago. And then the ends slip over the, the spreaders. And they're just a little bit big for the spreaders 
and I may throw just a little bit of tape to make it a little tighter but they don't really come off because they're under tension from the wire. And these are actually U-bolts that I, I picked up. Pick these up off of Amazon. I'll put a link in down below. Now this is the uh, piece of PVC or plexiglass. This is the piece of plexiglass that I used and I got two bolts. I'm going to change these probably to a size or so bigger and probably get some wing nuts so a little easier. What I found is when I tried to take this off with the wire I end up with a big mess. So now I'm just going to, I'll show you the wire. So and this is just, this is an old one I had. I'm going to make a new one that has a, a connector where I can put my coax directly to it without a barrel connector. Now I've got some really nice belt and stuff that I'm probably going to use for this. Now here's my wire all wound up. I used 26 gauge. I wanted to use this stuff. I had it for a while. K6 ARK and uh, the Smoking 8 basically told me about this stuff. It's really nice. It's called Poly Stealth and it's pretty strong. And what I would probably do, this is my, this keeps the two elements apart, the distance. And what I'm probably going to do is change this to, since I'm going to wind it like this, I'm going to change these to some eighth inch paracord also so it winds up real nice. This didn't do too bad, but it could be better. All right, let me show you. So basically what we do here, and I'll do this, especially I'm going to do a parks on the air. That's what I made this for more. I'm going to, basically, I'm going to have all this stuff in there before I leave. But they just slide in there like that. See how that hit that? Now you just turn it upside down and tighten all the U bolts, and it's ready to go. And you set it on your mast, and then, and I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll take a video of it on a, a tripod up off the ground, so you can see what everything it is, how it's all put together, and how it looks. And I'll show you that a little later in the video. All right, and I also have some contacts. I didn't. I haven't really used this yet. Um, but uh, I've got a couple interesting contacts. I was pointed pretty much towards Wisconsin. Picked up a station there. About I was about S6 with 10 watts, 12 watts. And uh, that, that guy was talking to a guy up in British Columbia. The guy said I was 20 over, and I wasn't even pointed at the guy. So this, this these antennas really work. Okay, I'm going to show you the Moxon builds as I have it for now. Here's the plate. So you basically have four poles. U-bolts are holding the, the poles. Got a plate down here that holds it to the mast. It's blowing in the wind here on me. And the poles go out. To the corners. And then there's a string above, which is eighth inch uh, paracord. You get your feed line here. At the ends, these are uh, you, you nail these into a tree for electric fence and then it holds it. And what I've done, it's really hard to see, but I've tied at the corners, it's kind of hard to keep it there. So I tied a knot in each corner and just slip it over this, this little fitting right here. There's the wire right there. And then for the uh, separation I'm using uh, weed eater line again 
with a fitting there, like for hooking up wires. I did the same thing, I mushroomed it inside here so it won't slip and crimped it. And then over here to the feed line, I cut this out of some plexiglass. Maybe go away from the sun there. And I'll probably change this to a little bigger stuff. I may change this eventually when the bands get better. I may actually uh, turn this into a 15 and a 10 also. This is for cut for 20. And basically I did the uh, this little piece of PVC above and that that's what happens is the 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 mass will go up through here up a ways and then this slips over and that helps hold the ends up uh you don't have to do that but you lose oh, about three feet of of your height there so good for you that's uh, good to hear I, I love to hear stories of guys that have uh got some timing in their retirement or still enjoying life. Uh, too many of the people I worked with died too young and didn't get a chance to enjoy it. Yeah, my father-in-law came down with ALS and he retired at 55, so he got, uh, and he died at 67. So uh, likewise, I'm uh, glad he uh, took an early retirement. Contact. I think there was a contact in there. Yeah, the call sign here is KK6USY, the name is Chuck. And I'm just testing out a 20-meter uh, moxon I just put together for portable work and uh, heard you guys talking there and just I'm running about 12 watts uh, just seeing if I could reach you guys. Where are you at? I'm in California, uh, just south of Sacramento. Yeah, the QSB on you is pretty bad, but you're uh, on S6. Okay, yeah, you went down just now. You were like about an S8, S9. So I think the band's moving around. Uh, I was just testing this thing out and uh, wanted to see if I could contact both of you guys. Yeah, can you You're just about 20 idea? over in Victoria. About 20 over in Victoria. Copy the 20 over in Victoria. Not bad for 12 watts, I guess. I'd say that's pretty good for 12 watts. And this thing's only about 10 or 12 feet off the ground right now. I'm just playing with it. I'm, I'm making it, and I'm doing this video for Parks on the Air antenna that you can set up, you know, when you are when you have your truck over. Well, keep doing what you're doing, because uh, you're getting out really well into Victoria, and uh, sounds like Ron's getting you pretty good in Wisconsin there as well. Yeah, All right, appreciate it, guys. Uh, thanks for the contact. Uh, you're helping me out a lot there. Uh, this is KK6USY, 73s, guys, and uh, be safe. 73. Hi, thanks for joining me on the show today. That You know, the Moxon's a really good little antenna. It's 70% 70, 70 the size of a, uh, a two-element Yag that's full size. Only 0.5 dBi gain down. And uh, they work really well. I've used them in the past. So I'm going to take this thing out tomorrow, probably and do a parks on the air and try to get a good uh, little test on it. So I'm going to take this out tomorrow and do a parks on the air along with another antenna and do some testing and I'll definitely get some video of that. So if you like today's video, just hit me, give me a like there, would you, if you would. And uh, if you're new here, subscribe. And uh, hit the all button so you get all future videos. This is Chuck KK6USY for Ham Radio Adventures. Thank you. And uh, 73s be safe, all.